Hey, good day, y'all. Thank you for looking at this video and to listening to this program. Um, the name of today's topic is based on a Jehovah Witness article uh, entitled Spirits of the Dead. Can't you, can't you, can they help you or harm you? Or do, and do they really, do they really exist? We're going to look into this topic based on the Bible and see what the Bible really says about spirits of the dead and what they're all about. And um, I know it's a very uh, topic that a lot, lots of people does not want to look into due to fear of whatever superstition, tradition, and all these things. So we try to clear things up here based on the Bible. For I believe in the Bible is the authentic book that could clear all matter streets, set all matter street, and bring the truth to light. So we can see what's the truth on this matter. So once again, thank you for listening, and um, I pray that God uh, blessings be on this topic here, opening all ones and all individuals uh, that interested in this topic to open their eyes and understand, including myself. Pray for this and all our blessings to Jesus' precious name. Amen. So, okay, good. Uh, the spirits of the dead, how can they help you or harm you? Now, I grew up in a small village in the northern province, relates an individual. by the name of uh, this individual by the name one second please let me get this Okay, sorry for that um, brief delay. Uh, computer is sticking up a little here. Slow enough. Yeah, the individual by the name of du Duda from Sierra Leone, right? He said he grew up in Northern Province, in a large area. And he said, once when I was a boy, as there was a large dispute between my family and another family. Both claimed the same land. To settle the matter, a medicine man was called in. He gave another man a mirror as then covered him with a white cloth. Soon the man under the cloth began to tremble and sweat as he looked into the mirror. He explained, I see an older man approaching. He's dressed in white garments. He's tall and old with gray hair, and he walks with a slight stoop. He was, this, he was describing a grandfather. He then became hysterical and cried out, If you don't believe what I'm saying, come look for yourself. Of course, of course none of us had the courage to do that. The medicine man claimed by sprinkling on him a magical mixture of leaves and water, which he held in a calabash. Speaking to the mirror man, grandfather said, the land belongs to our family. He told my grandfather, my grandmother, and she should work the land, all right? She should work the land. told my grandfather she should work the land speak right, she told my father and speak it to she told she, she should work the land without worry 
The other family accepted the judgment and each issue was settled. Such experiences are common in West Africa. And here, as in other parts of the world, countless millions believe that the dead people, as a dead people, pass on to the spirit world, where they are able to observe and ex influence the lives of people on earth. Is this belief true? Are the dead really alive? If not, who are those who claim to be spirits of the dead? Knowing the correct answer to these questions is vitally important. It is a life and death matter. Now, spirits have not lived and died on earth. Spirits exist within the spirit Within the invisible spirit realm, there are both good and bad spirits. Are these persons who have lived and died? Are these persons who have lived and died? Are they persons who have lived and lived and died on earth? No, they are not. Now, when a spirit person when a person dies, he or she does not pass on to a spirit world, as many people think. How do we know this? Because the Bible says so. The Bible is a book of truth that comes from the only true God whose name is Jehovah. Jehovah created humans and he will know Jehovah created humans, right? All of us. And uh, he well knows what happened to us and to all humans when as they die. And we're going to look at the scripture in Psalms 83, 18 and then 2 Peter 3, 16. Psalms 83. Psalms 83 verse 18 states may people know that you whose name is jehovah so this is a scripture that confirms god's name that people know who you who name is jehovah you alone are the most high over all the earth and then we're going to look at 2 timothy 3 16 Timothy 3 16 states so that the man of God may be fully sorry now all scriptures is inspired by God and beneficial for teaching teaching for proving for sentencing straight and for discipline and righteousness so there we see the grounds for this study here that all the scriptures all the truths must come from God and from the scriptures that he said is beneficial for teaching for setting things straight for straightening things that lies or false or so on so the bible a very important book that we're looking into to see the truth on this very very important matter now the bible says that god formed adam right the first man out of the dust of the ground in genesis 2 17. now god put this man adam in the paradise the garden of eden now if adam had obeyed jehovah's law he will not have died. He will still be alive on our today. But when Adam deliberately, right? When Adam deliberately broke God's law, God said to him, You will return to the ground, for out of it you are taken. For thus you are, and so thus you will return. Right? Now, in Genesis, we see that scripture there in Genesis 3.19, if you look it up. 
Now what does this mean though? Well, where was Adam before Jehovah created him from the dust? He was nowhere. He was not even an unborn spirit in heaven. He did not exist. Also, when Jehovah said that Adam will return to the ground, he meant that Adam will die. He did not, cro he did not cross over, right, so to speak. He did not cross over to the spirit realm. At that, Adam once again became lifeless, non-existent. And that is the absence of life. But what about others who have died? Are they also non-existent? The Bible answer. And in Ezekiel 3.20 states, all, both humans and animals, are going to one place. They have all come to be from the dust, and they are all returning to the dust. Ezekiel 3.20 also, in Ezekiel 9.5 states, the dead are conscious of nothing at all. They love and they hate and their jealousies have already perished in Ezekiel 9.6. In Ezekiel 9.10 states, there is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom. In she hole, the another word for the word grave, the place in which you are going. Now man goes back to his ground. Psalms one forty six four states, "In that day his thoughts do perish." Now, do the, do you find these scriptures just read hard to accept? If so, think about this. In many families, the man earns money to support his household. When the man dies, his family usually suffered hardship. Sometimes his wife and children's children do not even have enough money to buy food. Perhaps the man's enemies will abuse them. And now ask yourself, if that man is alive in the spirit world, why does he not continue to provide for his family? Right? Why does he not protect his family right, from bad people? It is because the, spirit, the, the scripture are correct. The man is lifeless, unable to do anything according to the scriptures. And we can look at Psalm 115, 17. Psalms 115 and verse 17 states, The 30 for safety, okay, 17 states. The dead do not praise Jah or Jehovah, right? Nor do any who go down into the silence of death, right? So, uh, th does that this mean that the dead will never come to life again? No, it does not, right? We will talk about the resurrection later. But it does mean that dead people do not know what you are doing. They cannot see you, hear you, or talk to you. You need not fear them. They cannot help you. They cannot harm you. Ezekiel 9, 4. And Ezekiel, we can look at Ezekiel, Ezekiel 9, 4 states, Nine, chapter nine, verse four. Nine, four states: There is hope for whatever. There is hope for what to, for whoever is among the living, because a live dead dog is better than of than a dead lion. And then if you could look, if you look at Isaiah 26, 14, Isaiah 26, verse 14 states, 
they are dead and they will not live. Powerless in death, they will not rise up. For you have torn your attention to them to annihilate them and destroy all mention of them. So clearly, the dead can't do anything. It can't talk, it can't fight, it can't harm anyone. It's just lifeless, it's just non-existent according to scriptures and we know that's a fact. We all are who believe in the scriptures, you know, we can't just believe the other part but then disbelieve this part. You know, you either believe in the scriptures or you don't believe in the scriptures. So the dead cannot help the hungry or protect victims of abuse. Now millions of spirit creatures, we can find out what spirit creatures is all about. Now, according to the Bible, there are spirit creatures and there are physical creatures and humans, animals, plants, you know, the earth, the planets, the moon, the sun, the stars, so forth, are all physical creations. But then, the Bible, we can understand there are also spirit creations. And, and, and we can look at some of these crea crea creations or creatures, millions of spirit creatures. The Bible tells us that there are many spirit persons or creatures, right? Jehovah himself is a spirit. And we can look at John 4, 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4, verse 24. John chapter 4 verse 24 states God is a spirit and those worshiping him must worship him worship him in spirit and in truth right so right after the bat we see there are spirit creatures and God according to the Bible here is the almighty spirit he's a spirit right but humans mankind we are not spirits and when you die, when we die, according to the Bible, you become non-existent as you was before you were born as a man. You were not existing, right? You were not a spirit somewhere, and then you're born as a man, and then you died and gone back a spirit. That's not that's not true. Not based on the scriptures we just read, right? So you can look also two Corinthians three seventeen. Two Corinthians, the second Corinthians, verse three, chapter seventeen states. We're looking into the Bible, you know, it's setting things straight. Three seventeen states. Now Jehovah is a spirit, and where the spirit of Jehovah is, there is freedom. So Jehovah is the spirit that we need to follow. We got where he is, there's freedom, real freedom, you know. And uh, so eighteen verse eighteen states. Uh, 3, 17, 18. And all of us, while we were, while we with unveiled faces reflect like mirrors the glory of Jehovah and transformed into the same image from the degree of glory to another the glory, exactly it is done by Jehovah the Spirit. At one time, Jehovah was alone in the universe. And then he began to create spirit persons called angels as they are more powerful and more intelligent than humans and Jehovah created many angels God's servant Daniel in a vision saw a, a hundred million angels and we can look at that in Daniel 7 10 the book of Daniel after Ezekiel ch chapter 7 verse 10 states And a stream, and this is Daniel was in a vision. God provided him a vision of what's going on in heaven. And he said, a stream of fire is flowing and going out from before him. A thousand, thousand keep ministering to him. And ten thousand, ten thousand stood before him. And the court took its seat and the books were open. So before God, there were a thousand, right? Thousand keep ministering to him. And ten thousand times ten thousand. 
Mais Adal, 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 il saw millions, hundreds of millions, all are millions of angels, right? You know, Daniel 7, also, Daniel, sorry, Hebrew 1, 7 also brings that out, or brings similar in event, Hebrew, in the, in the book of the New Testament, verses 1, two Hebrew verses 1 states, Hebrew verse 1 7 states, All he says about the angels, he makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So God clearly said that he makes his angels spirits. So he, he created them as spirits, but mankind he created as physical creatures, including animals and so forth, fishes and all. Are physical creatures, we're not spirits. Right? Now, the angels were created by God even before he made the earth. And we can look at Job 38, 4 to 7. Job 38. Job 38. Chapter 38, 4 to 7 states, Four to seven, four my arrows, is Job speaking, loom over my head like a heavy burden. They are too much for me to bear. Right? Job 38, 4, 7, he's reading from 4. And my wounds stink and festered because of my foolishness. Oh, sorry, I'm reading the wrong scripture. It's, I read in Psalms, uh, my mistake. Job 48, Job 38, Job 38. I went all the way to Psalms. Oh, Amen. Okay, you got it. Sorry for that. Job 38, 4 reads, Where were you? And this was God asking Job. They had a conversation. Where were you? Right? Where were you when I founded the earth? Right? Tell me if you think you understand. Right? Who sets set his measurements? In case you know, or who stretch a measure line across it. Into what were into what were its pedestal sunk, or who sunk, or who laid its cornerstone? And when the morning stars, and morning stars are not a word for angels, the same spirit creatures. Before to hear his morning stars joyfully cried out together. And a lot of time for the angels are sons of God. And all the sons of God began shouting in applause. Right? So there it is when the earth were made, these creatures already were made. Right? And they were there when in the make when the earth was finished making, and they all were applauding and shouting for joy and so forth, according to the scriptures. So clearly we could see that um, the air is spirit creatures, but we, as humans, are not. And at death, according to the Bible, we just cease to exist. We don't come be turned turn into spirits, or could be converted suddenly to spirits or none like that. And still alive somebody in the, in the spirit realm. 
has, has been the belief for hundreds, thousands of years and even today. Right? No. None of them, none of them are people who once lived and died on earth. None of these thousands of angels, as we are millions of angels that were spoken here in the book scriptures, none of them are spirit creatures that who had, I mean, humans who had died and suddenly became angels, so to speak. None of them, according to the Bible. Now, the great spirit Jehovah, God, created millions of spirit creatures, right, before he created the earth and mankind. So, right, as we said before, they were there when the earth was created, so obviously they couldn't have been some mankind who had uh, died and become spirit, because they were there before the earth was created, and they were there when the mankind was created, applauding the first man, Adam and Eve, when they were created. Right, so clearly. Now, rebellion in the spirit realm. If the spirit person, all the spirit person that Jehovah created were good, they are angels, then one angel turned bad. He is Satan, the devil. And Satan wanted people on earth to worship him instead of Jehovah and this is what happened in the garden of Eden there were many trees that bore delicious fruits and Jehovah told Adam and his wife Eve that they will could freely eat from them uh, but there was one tree that God said they should not eat from he said that if they ate from it they will positively die and we can look at that in, in the Genesis account of 2, 9, Genesis 2, 9. Excuse me one minute. Oh, sorry for this delay. Left off. Um, so the uh, current to Genesis two nine states, as thus Jehovah God made to grow out of the ground every tree that was pleasing to look at and good for food, and also the tree of life and in, in the middle of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and bad. And verse 16 states, And Jehovah God also gives this command to, every, to the man, From every tree of the garden you may eat to satisfaction. But as for the tree, in verse 17, 
of the knowledge of good and bad, you must not eat from it. From the day that you eat from it, you will positively die. So there was a clear command. And they could have easily, eat, you know, disobey that law and, you know, and live forever. You know, they'll be alive today and they, they, you know what I mean, alive forever if they just obey that law. That was the only command they ever had. They, they couldn't do anything else there, you know. They could eat all the foods, they could enjoy life and so on and so on. Now one day, Eve was by herself when a snake spoke to her. Of course. It was not really the snakes that talked, but it was Satan, the devil, who was a spirit angel, a creature that was there at the time when they were created and so on. He saw everything. He became, you know, jealous in his heart. He could be on to become the ruler of mankind. Now, it was Satan, the devil, made it seem that the snake was talking. So Satan told Eve that if she eat from the forbidden fruit, she, shall, she will be wise like God. He also said, right? He also said that she will not die. But these statements were lies, and nevertheless, Eve believed Satan and ate the fruit. Later, she gave some to Adam, and he ate also in Genesis 3 1 to 6. From this true story, we learn that Satan is a rebel and a liar. He told Eve that if she disobeyed God, she will not die. And that was a lie. She did die. Right? And, as, and so did Adam died. Satan did not die then though. And also he will eventually become. Also, although he eventually. Because he sinned. Meantime however he is alive and continue to mislead mankind. He is still a liar and he tries to get people to break God's law. John 8 44. We can look at John 8. See who, who this guy Satan is all, all, all up to, what he's all about. You know, from way back then he's still alive, misleading and lying to people. And John 8 44 states, you, This was Jesus telling the scribes and Pharisees when Jesus was on earth, God's son, You are from your father, the devil. And you wish to do the des desires of your father. That one was a murder when he began. He did not stand fast in the truth because, his, because truth is not in him. When he speaks the lie, he speaks according to his own disposition because he's a liar and a father of a lie. So even Jesus knew everything about Satan. He was, Jesus was there. Jesus also was an angel. Is an angel that was there when Satan rebelled against God and so forth. So when Satan used a storm to speak to Eve, she, Eve, joined his rebellion against God. She and her husband, Adam, joined the rebellion. Right? Now other angels also rebelled. And later, other angels turned bad. These angels noticed the good looking woman on earth and wanted to have sexual relations with them. So they came to earth, they dematerialized and came in looking like flesh and blood as men and put on male bodies, male human bodies they put on. They took the woman for themselves, they took the women for themselves and this was against God's purpose. We can look at that account in Genesis 6, 1, 2. Genesis 6, 1, 2. Genesis chapter 6 see now when men started to grow in number on the surface of the ground this after the before the flood actually and daughters were born to them the sons of the true God sons of the true God being angels right began to notice that the daughters of men were beautiful so they began taking as wives all whom they choose right so and if you look at uh, Jude, Jude 6, last book before 
Jude chapter 6. I think it was as book is the full revelation if I'm correct. Uh, Jude. The last book before Revelation at the back in the New Testament. Jude chapter 6. No, sorry, Jude verse 6. It says, And angels, these same wicked spirit angels, who did not keep their original position in heaven, but forsake their own proper dwelling place. Right? And that's when they, they talked about there when they came to earth to have sex with women of the men. Right? And they created the, the children was like giants in the earth. Right? God has preserved with eternal bonds and dense darkness for the judgment of the great day. So God, after they did that, our God, you know, judged them for destruction in the great day. They destroyed, they already been judged to be destroyed. I mean, that's a different topic, but they allowed Satan already been judged for destruction in the great day. Now it also caused much trouble for mankind. The wives of these angels bore children, but they were not normal children. They grew to be violent and cruel giants. Eventually, the earth became so filled with violence that Jehovah God proceeded to decided to destroy the wicked people by a great flood. The only humans who survived the flood were the righteous man Noah and his family, Genesis 6, 4, 11, 7, and 23. The wicked angels, however, Return to the spirit realm. They demetrialize that physical body that they took on. Demetrialize. You got the angels to do it. Even in, remember Abraham time when angel, right, there was righteous angels to materialize, look like two righteous angels, and sit down and eat with Noah and went to destroy the Sodom and Gomorrah and so on. Remember that come? So they are, the angels were always doing that with God's permission. But in this point, in this instance, they did it on their own. God did not send them to do that. They rebel against God. They become demons or wicked angels or rebellious, rebellious ones, right? Bad, wicked angels. So these wicked angels are returned to the spirit realm and they did not die though, but they were punished. They were not allowed back into God's family where God dwells of righteous angels. Furthermore, Jehovah no longer allows them to put on human bodies. So they, they, they were barred from materializing as human bodies, putting on human bodies. So they, could, they cannot come and look as humans no more, but they could come and tempt you in the mind and create uh, an illusion and tricks and whatever, you know, like, like it's one family member that died looking like them or something like that, but they can't they touch them, it's just they're nothing, they don't have no bodies, human bodies, they can't put on human bodies anymore like they did before the flood, right? You see? So... Furthermore, Jehovah no longer allowed them to put a human body. Eventually, they will die in the great judgment to come. 2 Peter 2 4 and Jude 6 that we just read. Now, Satan cast out of heaven. In the early part of our century, there was a war in heaven. The Bible book of Revelation describes what happened. And war broke out in heaven. Michael, who is the resurrected Jesus Christ, and his good angels battle with the dragon, Satan, the, the devil. And the dragon and its bad angels, right, that we talked about, battle. But it did not prevail. Neither was a place formed for them any longer. So even after the flood, they went back to the heavenly realm. They uh, now dwell in heaven. They were actually cast out to heaven at a certain time in our generation, our century. Um, if we're now 1914 according to Bible calculation, which is a different topic, we look at it next time, right? And according to Revelation here, so down they were they were cast out of heaven, down and said they're no longer in heaven. Your place for them was not found no anymore. So God, Jesus cast them out. God permission. So down the great dragon was hurled. The original serpent, the one called devil and Satan, was who's misleading the in inhabited earth. He was hurled down to the earth and his bad angels were hurled down with him. Right? And um, what was the result? The, the account continues and this account be glad. Right? Uh, 
I'm just what was the, I'm just going to be glad you heavens and you who result, reside in them. The good angels will be glad because Satan and the bad angels of spirit or spirits who are no long in heaven. But what about people on earth? The Bible says, Woe for the earth and for the sea, because the devil has come down to you having great anger, knowing he has a short period of time. And we can look that up in Revelation 12, 7 to 9 and 12. Revelation 12, 7 to 9 and 12. Yes, Satan and his wicked companions mislead and cause a great war, great war, sorry, for our people on earth. And since 1914, the Mankind, the earth has been in this great war of multiplying wars and, and, and famines and all these problems. The, the devil and wicked angels stirring up in governments, in families, all over the earth. So, woe for the people on earth. These wicked angels are called demons, they are enemies of God. All of them are evil. So, Satan is bad angels who are cast out of heaven, right? The demons are sp killers. Satan and the demons, wicked and the wicked angels, have always been cruel and dangerous. In earlier times, Satan killed the livestock and servants of the faithful Job. And then he killed Job's ten children by causing a great wind to destroy the house they were in. After that, Satan attacked Job with a magnificent boil from the sole of his feet to the crown of his head. Job 1, 7-9 and 2-7. to seven. We're going to read that to get a description of how cruel Job, Satan is the, the wicked angel are. We can look at Job 1 7 to 9. Job 1 7 to 9 states. Where Sam said, uh, well, then Job said to Satan, Where have you come from? And Satan answered, Jehovah from roving about on the earth and for walking about in it. And then Jehovah said to Satan, Have you taken note of my servant Job? There is no one like him on the earth. He is an upright man of integrity, fearing God and shunning what is bad. And at that Satan answered Job, It is for nothing that Job had feared God. Have you not put up a protective hedge around him and his house and everything he has? You have blessed the work of his hands and the livestock he, he has spread out in the land. But for a chain, stretch out your hand and strike everything he has, and we surely curse it to your very face. And Jehovah said to Satan, Look, everything that he has in your hand, only do not lay your hand on the man himself. So Satan went out from the presence of Jehovah. So we see the answers there, really reading on. And on that day, when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking, whining in the old older brother house, a messenger came to Jehovah and said, the cattle were plowing and the donkeys were gazing beside them. And when the Sibans attacked and took them, and they killed the servants with the sword. And I only one who escaped to tell you. Right? And while he was still speaking, another one came and said, Fire from God fell from the heavens and blazed among the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Now, they did not know what was happening, so they thought it was fire was coming from God, but actually the devil was doing these things. And while he was there speaking, another came and, and said, The Chaldeans formed three hands and made a raid on the camel and took them, and they killed the servants with a sword. I'm the one who has escaped to tell you. And while he was there speaking, yet another one came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking while in the oldest brother's house. Suddenly a great wind came, right? The devil scattered the wind from the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house so that it fell on the young people and they were all killed. And I'm the only one who escaped to tell you. Right? And at job, job, at that job got up and ripped apart his garment and cut his hair on his head and he fell to the ground and bowed and said, Naked I came out to my mother's womb and naked I returned. And job was taken given and Job was taken away. So there it shows right, Satan caused this great harm and this Job family and so forth and eventually we can read the story eventually on him, but he did not curse God to his face at, at Satan had thought he claimed that he would. Now in Jesus' day, the demons made some people speechless and blind in Matthew 9, 32, 33. And we can look at that, Matthew 9, 32 and 33 states, Matthew 9, 
32 and 33 states. And when they were leave, leaving, look, people brought him a speechless man possessed of a demon, which is out the wicked angels. They're not like somebody that died that doing these things, like people start or claim. Right? It's actually wicked angels, wicked spirits. Right? As we talked about before. And after the demon had been expelled, the speechless man spoke. Well, the crowds were amazed and said, never any, has anything like this has been seen. But the Pharisees were saying, it is by the rule of the demons that he expelled demons. So there it shows one instance there. And um, we can look at um, Matthew 12, 22. 12, 22 seats. Well, all the crowds were astonished and began to see him. Um, we didn't wrong to much. And then they brought him a demon possessed man who was blind and speechless. And he cured him, this Jesus cured him, so that the speechless man could speak and see. So these demons have been doing a lot of problems, caused a lot of problems right through the centuries and through the ages. Blinding people, causing speeches, a lot of foolishness. We need to know about them and be aware that they're the one that's responsible for all the bad things on earth. In, right? They tortured one man and made him slash himself with stone in Mark 5.5. 5. We can look at that. Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. Verse 5. And continuing the night and day, he was the same man, he was possessed with demons, crying out in the tombs and the mountains and slashing himself with stone. So when you see today people cutting themselves and all these things, people they always thinking it's some it's just some medical thing and, uh, and the doctor, yeah, let's go do that. Go to the doctor. But if they never stop a thing that demons could do is doing that. Cause people to slash it's clearly say in the Bible, cause people to slash themselves with stone. So when you see someone's caught himself, pray for them and they could get those demons away from them. Right? They also caused the boy to cry it out and dash him to the ground, violently convulsing him in Luke 9 40, Luke 9 42. If you look at Luke chapter 9 42, even little kids, little boys, and children, they, they, they attack him. They're so evil. 9 42. States. But even as he was approaching the demon, the demon hurled him, the little boy, to the ground and violently threw him into a convulsion. However, Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. So you see the demon is unclean spirit, not some body that died, unclean spirits, and healed the boy, the wicked spirit, right? Wicked angels. Right? And healed the boy and give him back to his father. So they tried to attack this boy, but Jesus intervened and, and, and get them all these unclean spirits on the guy. The boy healed him and gave him back to his, his father. So in the past, the demons made some people sick and threw others into cold vulture. Today, Satan and the demons are murderers as ever. In fact, the, the evil activity has increased since they were thrown out of heaven uh, to the earth. Prop reports from around the world testify to their cruelty. They plague some people with illnesses, others they, har they harass at night, depriving them of sleep or giving them terrible dreams. Others they abuse sexually. I say, Lord, they drive to insanity, murder, or suicide. Lithuania, Lithu Li Lintania, who lives in Surin Suriname, relates that a demon or bad spirit killed 60 members of her family and torment her physically and mentally for 18 years. From first hand experience, she says that the demons enjoy torturing the unwilling victims until death. But Jehovah is able to protect, protect the soul from Satan's attack. And we're going to see that in four Proverbs 18.10. Proverbs 18.10. Proverbs verse 18. Chapter 10 said, The name of Jehovah, right, is a strong tower. And into it, the righteous one runs and receives protection. So we should all, in our families and our endeavors and whatever, put Jehovah 
as our stronghold, as our tower. Call upon his name to protection from these wicked angels, wicked demons that exist worldwide. So for his name alone, call his name, they run. It's a strong tower. His name, Jehovah. Right? The righteous one runs and into the, his name and receives his protection. So these demons today cause some people to be violent. They harass others at night, giving them terrible dreams. The demons falsely claim the dead are alive. The Bible says that Satan is misleading the entire inhabited earth, Revelation 13, 9. Satan and his demons do not want us to believe God's word, the Bible. He tried to make people believe the, that the dead are alive. Somewhere in the spirit realm. Let's see how they do that. False religion. Many f religious teach that every human has a soul that passes on to the spirit realm after the death of the physical body. They say that the body dies but the soul does not die. Moreover, they assert that the soul cannot die and that it's in immortal. But God's words does not teach that. The Bible shows that the soul is a person, the complete individual, not something inside a person. For example, in describing the cre creation of Adam, the Bible says, And Jehovah God proceeded to form the man out of the dust from the ground and to blow into his nostrils the bread of life. And the man came to be a living soul, Genesis 2, 7. So Adam was not uh, given a soul, he was a soul. So humans, animals, fish, and birds are all souls. We're going to continue. So, so humans, animals, fish, they are, they are souls. They're not, we are not um, given a soul or, or body separate soul. Complete individual, a person, a man, who you are, your heartbeat and everything. Of what you, your individual, your soul. Became a living soul. You're a living soul. At birth. Right? In the, human, the body, the human, the person became a living soul. Right? Spirit mediums. Another way this, that Satan misleads people is through mediums. A medium is a person who is able to receive message directly from the spirit world. A great many people, including mediums themselves, believe that their messages came from the spirits of the dead people. But as we I've seen from the Bible, this is impossible. It's Ezekiel 9, 5, 6, and 10 all claims say that the dead you cease to exist, that your thoughts perish, and the dead is non existent. So it couldn't be, messages couldn't be coming from no dead person. From whom then do these messages come from? The demons themselves that we just spoke about. These demons are able to, de to observe a person when he's alive, they know how the person talks. And, when he, and what he looked like, or what he did, or what he knew. So it is easy for them to imitate, imitate, imitate people who have died. Samuel 1 Samuel 38, 3 19 brings that up. We're going to look at 1 Samuel 28, 3 to 19. 1 Samuel 28, verses 3 to 19 states. Then he treated, say, now Samuel had died, this is guy Samuel, prophet, had died, and all Israel had mourned him, and had buried him in Ramar, 
and his own city. And Saul had removed the spirit mediums and the fortune tellers from the land. The Philistines, the Philistines assembled and went and set up camp in Shurma. So Saul assembled all Israel, Israel and they set up camp in Gilborah. And when Saul saw, the, saw, saw the camp of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart trembled greatly. Although Saul would inquire of Jehovah, Jehovah never answered him, either in dreams or by the urine or through the prophets. Finally, Saul said to his servants, find me a woman who is a spirit medium, and I will go and consult her. His servants replied, look, there is a woman who is a spirit medium in Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other outer garments and went to the womb by night with two of his men, and he said, Use divination, please, by acting as a spirit medium and bring for me the one whom I've designated to you. However, the woman said to him, you must know what Saul did. Uh, right? How he removed the spirit mediums and the fortune tellers from the land. Why then are you trying to trap me to have me put to death? Saul then swore to her by Jehovah, saying, as surely as Jehovah is alive, you will not incur any guilt in this matter. At this the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he replied, Bring up Samuel for me. The Samuel who had died previously, right? So when the woman saw Samuel, she cried out at the top of her voice and said, Saul, why did you trick me? You are Saul. And the king said to her, Do not be afraid. What, what, what do you see? The woman replied to Saul, I see one like a great com a God coming out, out of earth. At once he asked me, what does he look like? And to which she said, it is an old man coming up, and he's clothed in a sleeveless coat. At that Saul realized that it was Samuel, and he bowed low on his face to the ground and prostrated himself. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by having me brought up? And Saul replied, I am in great trouble. The Philistines are fighting against me, and God has departed from me, and no longer answer me, either through the prophets or in dreams, so that is why I'm calling you on you to let me know what I shall do. And Saul said, Why do you inquire of me now that Jehovah has departed from you, and has become your adversary? And Jehovah will do for himself what he foretold through me. And Jehovah will rip the kingdom out of your hands, and give it to the one you f your following, David. Because you did not obey the voice of Jehovah and you did not execute his burning anger against the Amalekites. That's why Jehovah is doing this in this day, doing this to you in this day. Jehovah will also give both Israel and you into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Jehovah also gives the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. At once, Saul fell on the ground and became very much afraid because Samuel's words, and there was no strength left in him because he did not eat food all day and night. And when the woman came to Saul and saw that he had been great, greatly disturbed, she said to him, Here, your servant has obeyed what you said, and I risked my life and did what you told me to do. Now please listen to what your servant shall say, and let me set before you a piece of bread and eat so that you will have strength to go on your way. But he refused and said, I'm going. However, his servants and the woman kept urging him. Finally, he listened to them and go up from the ground and sat on the bed. And the woman fell a calf and also so they, she quickly started and took four and kneeled down break and went into the eleven bed. She served them to Saul and servants and they ate. After they rose up and left during the night. So there, this is one. This is where these wicked angels come up. A, a wicked demon come looking just like Samuel and speak these things to Saul, and he thought it was Samuel. But if you read on, in um, you find out at the end that 